Hi, this is Elliot Haspel and welcome to another edition of Best Practices Weekly. Today we're going to be talking about some effective ways to teach decimals, and this comes from an article in Teaching Children Mathematics, which a pair of university professors discuss how we can really help students understand the underlying concepts behind decimals instead of just teaching them rules which can often leave them confused when decimals start to get more complicated. And so, I think those teachers we understand that decimals is a pretty tough concept for young students, especially in the elementary grades, and we often use different teaching tools to help them uh, to be able to conceptualize or visualize what a decimal looks like. One of the most common ones the authors talk about is the idea of the decimal grid. And just in case you're not sure what that is, that's essentially when you get various grids, one for the tenths, which is broken up, one for the hundredths, which would have a hundred little squares in it, for the thousands, there are a thousand little squares in it. Uh, just a very, you know, common tool. Many curricula use this, many teachers use this, and, you know, you just have students shade in, you know, if it's two tenths, two of the tenths grid gets shaded in, if it's three hundredths, three of the hundredths grid gets shaded in, uh, etc. And so, what we've got here is sort of quite the idea that, in fact, uh, the grids in and of themselves aren't a problem, but often when they're just given out to students and used to have students, you know, fill in two tenths, fill in three hundredths, fill in, you know, four thousandths, that we're actually not really teaching students what place value means for decimals and how decimals really work. And so there are a couple of suggestions that the authors have. First is to really help students represent this in terms of fractional addition, and all that means is that if you've got two tenths and three hundredths, you can actually think about that as literally writing it as two tenths, two over ten, plus three over a hundred, plus three hundredths. But having that addition sign, it seems simple, but it's a critical link between these two grids, which a student might not otherwise be able to make. It also, when you're talking about comparing or ordering decimals, which can be very difficult for students, being able to see two tenths plus three hundredths, compare that against just you know, two tenths, that's pretty easy to see, right? Two tenths plus three hundredths must be bigger, because there's just more there. But when you get, give students point two and point two three, they can often get confused. So, really pushing them to represent the decimals and the decimal grids in terms of fractional addition, and this can go on for the thousands, ten thousandths, etc., is a very valuable way that we can help students understand the link between the place values, and, and really that all we're doing is breaking these decimals up into their composite place value parts. Second, help students see the relationship between the grids explicitly. So the fractional addition is one way to do it. Another way to do it is literally to sort of subdivide grid by grid. And so what this would mean is, you know, if you have students seeing, you know, here's the holes, and what we're doing is by circling one of the holes, and we're actually breaking that up into ten parts. Um, you know, these are the tenths, and then we're circling one of those tenths, and we're going to break that up into the hundredths. And we're going to circle one of those hundredths, and we're going to break it up down into the, ten, into the thousandths. What this is helping students see, again, the arrows kind of serve the purpose of the addition sign, is that these decimals are not these magical things that you have different numbers that are coming out of nowhere. They have a very deliberate relationship with one another, and all you're doing is taking a whole and breaking it up into smaller and smaller parts so that actually a hundredths connect to the tenths, and ten thousandths connect to the hundredths. So, by helping students see the relationship between the grids and between the place values, uh, you're really going to help them build, again, that conceptual understanding of just what decimals are and how they work. A couple of other best practices the authors suggest. Don't rely on procedures and tricks. I think we, as teachers, we often like those little shortcuts that students can take. For example, you know, use zeros to make sure that each decimal is of the same length, so you don't get confused by, uh, you know, just the one that only has goes to the tenths and the other one goes to the hundredths. Just put a zero after the one that only goes to the tenths, because it doesn't change the value, and then you can compare them easier. Or let's convert these all into fractions with. Um, like denominators, or let's all use exponents to get rid of the decimals altogether. These are great procedures that do get you to the right answer when you're comparing or ordering decimals, but do nothing to really help the students understand why decimals work the way that they do. So, the authors really caution to, to not rely on those procedures or tricks if possible. 
Also, if you are using the, the decimal grids, don't give all of them all the grids at once. If we are having students represent the number 0.23 and we just give them the tenths and the hundredths grid, they don't have to work to think about well, the way that the place values work together. They're just like, okay, I do my tenths, I do my hundredths. It's a very sort of flimsy understanding of it. So that will suggest is instead give students just the tenths uh, grid and have them ask for the hundredths grid or have them again draw it and show that like why they would want the hundredths grid, why they need it. Um, and so by that, doing that, you're again forcing students into this place of really uh, wrestling with how place value works, how decimals work, um, how this sort of each place value continues to subdivide more and more and more. And lastly, use real life follow up activities. So they give the example of you know using packages into crates into boxes, right? If you actually set that up in your classroom, you can help students see and visualize the same sort of subdivision that we're doing when we're going whole to tenths to hundredths by starting with the boxes and you're taking out the crates and then each crate has a certain number of packages in it and you're taking out the packages. Um, you know, maybe those packages have something else in it that you're taking out. Sort of by helping them do real life activities like that, you're really going to help the students uh, make concrete connections to these uh, concepts that they're learning in terms of the actual math. So, again, this is a really powerful way to sort of rethink how we teach decimals, and especially how we're using the tools like the decimal grids. So, uh, thanks for watching, and happy teaching!